Srinivasa Ramanujan was born in the Indian city of Erod on 22nd December 1887. At age 4 on 1st October 1892, Ramanujan was enrolled at the local school and was later enrolled at a school in Madras. But there was a problem. Ramanujan hated the school in Madras and tried so hard to avoid attending. Wednesday, Thursday. To make him go to school by force, his family enlisted a local constable. Stand up and let's go. You're going to be late. <laughs> now, this is where the story gets interesting. Ramanujan didn't hate school because he was dumb or unintelligent. In fact, the irony is that Ramanujan hated school because he was a genius. Ramanujan was a child prodigy who loved the mathematics more than probably anyone in his generation. What is 39,553 plus 2,302? 41,855. Correct. 39 times 7. 273. Correct. 203 divided by 7. 29. Correct. For example, in November of 1897, at the age of 10, Ramanujan passed his primary examination in arithmetic with the best scores in his district. By age 11, Ramanujan had exhausted the mathematical knowledge of two college students who lived in the same house with him. By age 13, he had mastered the advanced trigonometry book written by S. L. Looney. He completed mathematical exams in half the allotted time, solved some of the most difficult mathematical problems, and even got a scholarship to study at Government Arts College, Kumbakonem. But then, Ramanujan had no interest in most of the subjects the college was forcing him to study. For him, if college wasn't about complex mathematical problems, it wasn't exciting. So he failed English, physiology and many other subjects. Unsurprisingly, Ramanujan lost his scholarship and was kicked out of school. So he went to another school in 1905. He failed again and got kicked out again. <laughs> Nobody was interested in the fact that Ramanujan loved mathematics. Instead, everyone focused on what he hated. But they are right, sir. I have more important new ideas. Yes, but intuition is not enough. It has to be held accountable. Like Ramanujan, most young people who hate school don't actually hate education. They just hate the fact that nobody cares about what they're interested in. Many young people are interested in language, in writing, but everyone says if they fail math, they're dumb. Many young people are interested in accounting, business studies, and any business-related subject. But there's always pressure for them to pass geography, biology, and even English. Some students hate everything that has to do with memorizing facts and figures, and they like to do things with their hands. They want to experience the world. They learn through doing, but then everyone pressures them to memorize useless information. If you're one of the millions of teenagers who hate certain subjects in school, don't let anyone tell you that you hate education, that you're unintelligent, or that you're doomed. For example, when Galileo Galil dropped out of the University of Pisa in 1585, it wasn't because he hated education or he wasn't unintelligent. It was because his father and professors wanted him to do well in subjects he had no interest in. In 1862, when Nikola Tesla hated the fact that his father moved him to a bigger town near Gospik, where he could get a better school, it wasn't because he hated to be in a better school, but because the so-called better school would deny him the access to nature, which he loved so much. When Charles Darwin dropped out of Edinburgh Medical School in 1827, it wasn't because he hated education, it was because he hated what school called education. For example, Darwin loved dogs, 
cat catching, hunting, spending time in nature to study animals, collecting specimens, but his father told him that he would be a failure if he didn't have a degree from an elite school, so he forced him to Edinburgh. Well, astonishing as it may sound, the University of Edinburgh Medical School is prepared to accept you. Now, listen to this. It's normal to hate certain subjects in school because, unlike what everyone tells you, humans are heterogeneous. We are different from one another. We have different interests, different temperaments, and also different passions. The idea that every kid must know or like math, language, or science really doesn't make sense. Now, think about this. Fishes like to swim, but fishes can't fly. Horses love to run, but horses can't climb a tree. Monkeys love to climb trees, but monkeys can't swim. Birds love to fly, but birds can't run. Do you ever call any of these animals unintelligent because they lack the capacity that someone else has? While researching this video, I came across this cartoon. In this image, you have different animals. A small bird, a penguin, monkey, an elephant, a fish, something that looks like a crocodile, and a dog. Now, then the examiner told them, for a fair selection, everyone has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. While what the examiner in this image did is ridiculous, that's exactly what school does to everyone. Don't forget my advice for you. Don't let anyone make you feel that you hate education because you hate certain subjects. Don't let them make you feel unintelligent or doomed for life. My second advice for you is this. Don't allow the school to destroy your true passion. You see, as a teenager, I loved entrepreneurship and every school subject that has anything to do with money and the economy. In fact, I'd started more than three businesses by the time I was 15, but I hated a few subjects in school. Because I hated some subjects in school, my teachers made me feel bad and, of course, my parents also expected me to do well in school and get a good job so I had to blend in and follow the wish of society. By the time I was 18, I had lost my true passion and became like everyone else. I had changed from the guy who loved business to this guy who wanted to work in a bank as an accountant. Well, luckily for me, when I was 20, I regained my passion for entrepreneurship. Unfortunately, many young people aren't as lucky as I am. Today, there are many teenagers who, like Ramanujan, love certain things but everyone around them is pressuring them to do everything and have A's in every subject. The problem with that is that if you force an eaglet to live among chicks long enough, he will stop having an interest in flying or being an eagle. If you force any human to drop their individuality long enough, if you scatter their focus and make them feel that their passion doesn't matter or that something is wrong with them, if they are not like everyone else, they will blend in and become like everyone. And that is death. Now, this is what I advise you to do. Keep your passion alive, no matter what. Keep on practicing your music, no matter what. Never stop painting or writing, no matter what. Keep your passion for entrepreneurship, sports or history alive, no matter how much pressure you face. to keep your individuality and passion alive because that's the only thing that matters when you become an adult. Now I know it's not that easy because I have been in your shoes before but there are a few sacrifices you can make. For example, if you don't have time to practice the sport you like because everyone says you must pass chemistry, then sacrifice your weekend or delete your Facebook and Instagram accounts to have some time. If writing non-fiction stories is your passion and you don't have the time because everyone says you must pass math, then struggle as much as you can to get the minimum acceptable marks in any other subject you hate and then spend all your free time writing. If like Ramanujan, mathematics is your passion, don't ever lose that passion. 
no matter the pressure because in the next few years, nothing in the world will matter. Not all the degrees and facts and formulas you've memorized, but your passion. Treat your passion the way you'll treat your eyes and everything else the way you treat your fingernails. Thanks for watching.